Well, hello, a place along the way, family. It is Psalm 6 day. All right, well, let's get to it. Psalm 6 from, 6 from book 1, a prayer of faith in the time of distress to the chief musician with stringed instruments on an eight-stringed harp, a psalm of David. Verse 1, O Lord, do not rebuke me in your anger, nor chasten me in your hot displeasure. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am weak. O Lord, heal me, for my bones are troubled. My soul also is greatly troubled. But you, O Lord, how long? Return, O Lord, deliver me. O save me for your mercy's sake. For in death there is no remembrance of you. In the grave, who will give you thanks? I am weary with my groaning. All night I make my bed swim. I drench my couch with my tears. My eye wastes away because of grief. It grows old because of all my enemies. Depart from me, all you workers of iniquity, for the Lord has heard the voice of my weeping. The Lord has heard my supplication. The Lord will receive my prayer. Let all my enemies be ashamed and greatly troubled. Let them turn back and be ashamed suddenly. Amen. All right, so the notes in my study Bible for Psalm 6. So for verses 1 through 10, which is the whole psalm, it says, Do not rebuke. Though not in all cases is sickness the consequence of sin, yet when it is, the pain can be instrumental in bringing the sinner face to face with God. 1 Corinthians 11.30. It makes me think about um, Pastor Jeff taught us about the um, man who had the sickness, the infirmity that we don't know exactly what it was, and by the pool of um, Bethesda, am I saying that right? Anyway, that pool, <laughs> and um, and they were asking Jesus why, who sinned, him or his parents, and Jesus said neither. It was so that the Father would be glorified, or that He would be glorified. Um, so, yeah, that, that's interesting that it said, you know, that's not always why, but when it is, um, it's said that it can be instrumental in bringing the sinner face to face with God. Yeah. Okay. Then chapter six, again, um, Psalm six, verse two and three, my notes say David's troubled body greatly troubled his soul showing the effect sickness can have on the moods and attitudes of the mind. Yes, I remember my therapist years ago telling me that there's no such thing really as a sick body and healthy mind or a sick mind and a healthy body. They work together. Soul. This was quoted by Jesus as he headed toward crucifixion, John 12, 27. So what did it say about soul? Now I can't even find, oh, I'm reading the wrong psalm. Okay, so soul, oh yeah, my soul also is greatly troubled, but you, oh Lord, how long? And it says, this was quoted by Jesus as he headed toward crucifixion, John 12, 27. And then verse two, bones are mentioned repeatedly in the Psalms as a symbol for the health of the whole body. Verse five, the grave in Hebrew that Sheol was thought to be a place of gloomy darkness. David's information on the spirit world was incomplete, but later Christ shed light on it. 2 Timothy 1.10. Verses 7 and 8, it says, As vultures gather around a wounded prey, so enemies gather to rejoice over the calamities of the struggling and take advantage of any weaknesses. Yes. And then verses 9 and 10 for prayer, it says prayer is seen as the prescription that not only heals the body, but strengthens the weakened soul so that the villains are the ones who become greatly troubled and must flee. Okay. All right. And so let me see. Is there any other notes for Psalm 6? That is it for Psalm 6 in my study Bible, y'all. Okay. Have a blessed day and I'll see you tomorrow.